straight ahead on CCX News. What tree experts call the death curve and why they say it's coming to the Northwest Metro. Plus, call it the Robbinsdale rebirth, the busiest time for construction in that city in recent memory. But first, homeowners out thousands of dollars, including a family in New Hope. Their story leads to a warning about a landscape contractor. CCX News starts right now. Hello everyone and thanks for joining us. A New Hope family is accusing a landscaping contractor of duping them out of more than $2,000. A few more customers also say the contractor took their cash, leaving them high and dry. Reporter Sonia Goins has more. Tom and Carrie Johnson's front yard has a lot of curb appeal, but their backyard needed a little TLC. They reached out to Beaver Landscaping Design Group at this year's Home and Garden Show. April 27th, he came out to our home and did the design for us, wrote up a quote, assured us that we'd still have it done in a timely manner. The New Hope homeowners were going to replace their existing deck with a much larger brick patio. The plan was is to take the majority of this whole area from the garage out was going to be brick patio. Flowers and rocks were also included in the design. We couldn't wait to get the deck built so we could have a last flings for no, summer. Yep, for summer. <laughs> but their party plans were put on hold after they say Beaver Landscaping and Design didn't hold up to their part of the deal. We were told initially that the job had been pushed back to mid-August. The couple agreed to pay one third of the cost up front and another third when the work was being done and the last payment when the work was complete. We sent them a check, we signed the contract, they cashed the check. But the deadline for starting the project came and went. We're stuck holding the bag $2,400 later. The Johnsons say no one returned their calls. Calling about our uh, patio job, uh, we had contracted with you. The couple sent many emails and text messages. Beaver Landscaping continued to promise to come through. Finally, they heard back from an employee, but it wasn't the news they wanted to hear. That's when he said, yeah, there's big problems. He was closing the doors and good luck getting your money. CCX News also showed up to Beaver Landscaping and Design's Blaine location, but there was no sign of the business. I mean, to me at first it was a punch on the stomach. Carrie says she dipped into her retirement savings to pay for the patio. $2,400 isn't a ton of money, but to us it is. The Johnsons are sharing their story so no one else falls victim. I'm hopeful that there's justice in the world and we'll see our money come back to us. Now, I also reached out several times to Beaver Landscape and Design. My calls kept bouncing back to voicemail. Meanwhile, the Johnsons are not the only ones claiming the company built them out of money. I spoke with one man who said he's out $20,000. I also got a phone call from a woman in Ham Lake who says she's out $3,000. Several people, including the Johnsons, say they're in the process of filing a complaint with the Minnesota Attorney General's office. Shannon? Thank you, Sonia. The Minnesota Department of Labor and Industry is the agency responsible for licensing building contractors. It recommends always getting more than one bid for a job. You can also call the department to verify the contractor is licensed. And it advises consumers to ask a contractor for references, which allows you to check with former customers to see if they are satisfied with the quality of work. Emerald Ash Borer has been in the Northwest Metro for about 10 years, and experts say that's right about the time it takes for the invasive pest to really start doing damage. In the first few years, we might see a tree here or there be compromised by Emerald Ash Borer, but really after the 8th, 9th, 10 years when we really start to see, see effects from the, the borer. Arborist Justin Benz is describing what experts call the death curve. In other words, the longer the ash borer is in an area, the faster the damage happens. The East Metro is already in the death curve and they expect to lose upwards of a half a million trees. These pictures show the signs of damage from emerald ash borer. Experts here in the Northwest Metro say we'll see the same thing as the East Metro because even though treatments for trees are available, it's simply not possible to treat every tree, especially since they have to be reapplied every two years. Arborists recommend prioritizing treating large mature ash trees. That's because it takes decades for an ash tree to get big. You know, mature trees like this one here we'll never see again in our lifetime. So if it's a mature, healthy ash tree, I definitely recommend the two-year trunk injection. 
Experts say ash trees lost to emerald ash borer should be replaced with a variety of different trees so that the replacements aren't as vulnerable to problems like this in the future. In other news, the Twin Cities Salvation Army has moved out of Brooklyn Center and into a new space in Blaine. The nonprofit expanded its operations center inside the Anoka County Human Services Center. The organization now has fully operating food pantry at the Blaine location and it has since stopped helping with the food pantry in Brooklyn Center. The idea was to create a one-stop shop for the Salvation Army's clients that they serve in Anoka County. The food shop is a brand new experience for us because we've always helped with other basic needs but not a food shelf. So when we were approached to open a food shelf here, we we're already doing other services here, it was a natural fit. The food pantry serves around 200 households a month. September is National Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. Suicidal thoughts, much like mental health conditions, can affect anyone. If everyone took the moment that they were feeling like their saddest in, in their life and they amplified it by 10 and then didn't have anyone around them and then sometimes it's even worse than that, like that's kind of like what depression is like and you just, it's hard. In a CCX News special report airing Thursday and throughout the month, we talk about mental health. It used to be a taboo topic, but it's not anymore. Not only are people beginning to talk about it more openly, but schools and cities are starting to incorporate policies and procedures for dealing with mental health. So people are more open to talking about it, I think, than ever before. And we're also seeing that more people are seeking treatment than ever before. Join us for an in-depth look at mental health for a special report called The Silent Struggle, talking about mental health, starting Thursday right here on CCX News. Still ahead today on CCX News, one of the busiest construction periods in recent Robbinsdale history. We'll show you what it looks like up next. Plus, Wyzetta's girls and boys soccer teams take on Edina in key late conference matchups. That's later in sports. But first, no complaints with the forecast. Thursday will be sunny and comfortable. Things are changing in the Robbinsdale business community. The city has plenty of new development going on, including a long-awaited supermarket that opens soon. We get more now from Eric Nelson. Things are always trending up in Robbinsdale, but this is an especially busy time for us. In the shadow of the Robbinsdale water tower, there are three major building projects going on simultaneously in the city. One finishing up at High V, one just getting started at Birdtown Flats, and one that we're seeing is getting ready to get underway at the Travail Snoo building. High V is one of the anchors in this construction trifecta, and the supermarket should have an instant impact. We can be involved in the community, we can fulfill a need for the community. High V's grand opening is Tuesday, September 18th. The grocery giant will bring its own unique brand to Robbinsdale and create 500 jobs, including 120 full-time. It's great to have a new large employer here in the city since the site with the Terrace Mall has been vacant for so long. We've heard from the community, the residents, uh, the city council, that this is an area that uh, Hy-Vee can really be a pillar in the community. Well, we've had people calling us here, here at City Hall for months, day, every day, somebody calling, when's hy -Vee open, when's hy -Vee open? Just a couple blocks north of hy -Vee, Birdtown Flats will soon replace this old business complex. Groundbreaking is September 11th. That's going to be 152 apartment buildings when it's all completed. Uh, at this point, probably toward the middle end of next year, would be an opportunity for people to move into a great new apartment building with amenities right here in Robbinsdale. Meanwhile, in downtown Robbinsdale, the popular Travail restaurant is getting ready to move to a new location across the street. On the Hubbard side of the building, they're getting ready to relocate the electrical power. Uh, that's the first step before they could get the building demolition underway. Yes, it's a good time to be doing business in Robbinsdale. And the city believes it's all for the better. In Robbinsdale, I'm Eric Nelson, CCX News. Exciting times there. Still ahead, a sneak peek of our visit with Cooper grad turned Hollywood actor Steve Zahn. But first, the Champlain Park girls soccer team continues its strong start with a key win. John Jacobson has those highlights up next.
I'm John Jacobson with sports. Wyzetta and Edina are ranked in the top 10 in the state in both boys and girls soccer. Those four teams played through a steady rain in a late conference doubleheader Tuesday night in Plymouth. The boys match is scoreless deep into the second half when Wyzetta strikes. Stuart Sane, the throw in, it bounces around. Aiden McGugan gets the foot on him. He shoots and scores, and the Trojans go on to win one to nothing. In the girls' match, it's number one, Wyzetta versus number two, Edina. First half, Wyzetta's Emily Dillon heads it for Lily Gilbertson, and she scores for a one to nothing lead. But the Hornets find their footing in the second half and dominate. Jesse Hunt cranks a beautiful shot over the Wyzetta keeper and in. That ties the score. Ashley Manderfeld gets the loose ball in the box, and she scores the go-ahead marker here. Hunt scores twice, and Edina goes on to win 3-1. It's the first loss of the season for the Trojans. Champlain Park is off to a great start in girls' soccer. Less than a week after they knocked off last year's state runner-up Maple Grove, the Rebels went after another of the top teams in the Northwest Suburban Conference. Champlain Park at home to play last year's Section 5 to play runner-up Centennial. Alex Lotz, nice takeaway of the ball for the Rebels. Her shot is stopped, but it comes to Maley Mathis. She scores and gives Champlain Park a 1-0 first-half lead. The Rebels continue to pressure the Cougars. Morgan Balk rifles a shot off the crossbar while bounces around before coming to Grace Marshalik. She shoots and scores. Champlain Park takes a 2-0 lead into halftime. Second half, and Izzy Quick plays a great through ball, springing Lotz. She outruns the D and scores. Lotz has scored in every match this season and already has 11 goals on the season. It's a great performance by Champlain Park. Allison Hardig scores the Rebels' fourth goal of the night on the rebound. Champlain Park wins 4-1. They are now 5-0 on the season. Breck's volleyball team has shown improvement under third-year head coach Morgan Bowl. Tuesday night, the Mustangs hosted rival Blake. Former Gopher player Bowl and her team looking to win their IMAC conference opener. First set, Sophia Lennon sets the ball outside to Riley Walsh for the kill and a point in a 15-9 lead for Breck. The Mustangs close the set on a 13-4 run. Walsh gets another kill here, and Breck wins the first set 25-12. In the second set, Breck Sydney Umana tips it over the Bears blockers. Mustangs up 9-3. Kea Hunt with a back set to Leonard who knocks down the shot for a kill to make it 23-10. Breck, they win the second set 25-10 and take the third one as well. Breck wins it in three. The Mustangs are now 2-1 and one on the season. The Hopkins volleyball team has been in the past three state tournaments. As Jay Wilcox reports, the Royals have some new faces in the lineup but have promised this fall. The Hopkins Royals lost some key pieces from their state tournament team last fall, but they have talent, both new and returning. Pretty good. We have some good team chemistry, some great players, great people, so I'm really excited for the season. We have a lot of potential. Um, there's definitely a lot of new players, but we definitely have the heart and energy to have a really good season. And um, Last year we were a really good team, but just keep going and we have really good energy, so yeah. We graduated in all state setter and all conference libero, so those are two big holes to fill. But I'm really proud of the girls. They're, we've got some young talent uh, with a combination of some experienced players. All state outside hitter Anna Erickson is a top weapon. And the Tut sisters, Shadir and Naya Kim, help to anchor the middle. Seventh grader Stella Swenson, Coach Vicki Swenson's daughter, continues a long run of setters in the family getting everyone on the same page so they can play fast without having to overthink anything is a key. You know, playing together consistently with the same group, it matters in this sport, and I think they're doing a nice job in settling into their roles. So I'm excited. I think it's going to be a fun season. They've started a little slow, but the Royals are hoping to end up at the Excel Center once again at the end of the season. For sure, for sure. No doubt in my mind that we can definitely be back in the state tournament again. It's something that we certainly talk about, um, being at the state tournament. Um, we've been fortunate enough to be there the last three years, but, you know, there's so much that has to happen between now and then. Uh, I look at our team and I shake my head and think, how would we ever get there? And then by November, I go, you know what, we deserve this. We're pretty good. We'll see if Hopkins can build a section title contender once again. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports.
The Royals are 1-2 and two heading into their match against Roseville Wednesday night. They will be at Wysetta Thursday in a match you can see live here on CCX1. That's all for sports. Shannon, back to you. All right. Thank you, John. In Local Vote 2018, there are three seats open on the Osseo School Board. That's because members' terms are expiring. Seeking re-election for one of those seats is Jessica Craig. CZ Goya is also seating, seeking a seat on the Osseo School Board. Hello, I'm Jessica Craig. I was first elected in 2014 and I currently serve as board clerk. I have three daughters who attend our schools and I'm proud to call Maple Grove my home. One key issue I ran on four years ago was the idea of fiscal responsibility. I believe I have kept my promise to residents by voting against raising property taxes each year and by eliminating a very expensive and controversial consulting firm contract. I hope my record stands as proof of my pragmatic approach to decision making. With a $350 million budget and over 30 schools, there's a lot to prioritize. We are bound by federal law, state statutes, consortium agreements, and policies from MDE. You must be able to understand and work from within those parameters. I hope to continue to serve on behalf of our residents, and I ask for your vote on November 6th. You can visit jessicacraig.net to learn more. As an immigrant parent, a community advocate, and tenure math teacher, who got my start in public education in District 279, I feel compelled to run for a seat on the school board because of the opportunities of growth that I see in this district. I moved to Minnesota in 2007 from Texas. I very soon started to see the gaps in the education of students I tutored that were not being met by the district. These gaps continue to exist for our students of color and schools that are in the Brooklyn's in District 279. The inequity in distribution of quality resources across the district is forcing parents to make decisions between keeping their community roots and quality education for their children. This is unfair and inhumane. Please vote CZ Goya on November 6th for us, your school board. Up next, reality doesn't always bite. A lifetime honor for a local boy does good. And finally, a 1986 graduate of Cooper High School is in town this week to accept a prestigious honor. Actor Steve Zahn will receive the Lifetime Achievement Award Thursday night from the Twin Cities Film Fest. Zahn visited our studio Wednesday afternoon. His career in film and television dates back to the early 1990s, but he got his start in theater, first at Plymouth Junior High and then at Cooper High School, where he is a member of their Hall of Fame. He credits the teachers at those schools with helping him get to where he is today. Without that exposure to quality, quality art it, um, at that age, I, I definitely would not be sitting here right now. I'd be digging a hole, but digging it well. <laughs> we are so glad he's not doing that. Later this week, we'll hear more from Steve and see what advice he has for any actors hoping to follow in his footsteps. It was definitely an exciting day here at CCX Media. That's all the news we have for now. We'll see you tomorrow.